Hey there, uh, Wesley Acera here. So Gannat's quote um, overall was very perspective bending. It was definitely like an eye opener to me. Uh, and there are quite a few uh, parts of it that caught my eye and piqued my interest. So for instance, right off the bat, first sentence, I've come to a frightening conclusion that I'm the decisive element in the classroom. So number one, the decisive element not A, like, he is the one in charge, um, and the whole thing with that, obviously, like, you know, a classroom isn't like a business meeting, it's not like everyone is contributing to the table, and it's like an equal thing, it's more like, like a mother goose guiding, uh, baby geese across a pond, maybe, um, there's, there's a guide, a sole guide, and pretty much, okay, second part, uh, frightening conclusion. I've come to a frightening conclusion. Why would the conf conclusion be frightening? Because he's, he's really realizing just what that leadership means. All throughout the rest of the quote, he's, he's, he's grimacing over how much power he has over these children's lives. Um, and it's like, I could go this way, the right way, I could make things good for them, I could heal them, or it could go down a really different path. As for the second quote, um, I possess a tremendous power to make a child's life miserable or joyous. And most of these quotes are just like bringing me back to my own uh, upbringing uh, in elementary school. And by the way, uh, throughout this whole quote, I've been looking at it from an elementary school perspective because not only is that my uh, intended field, but uh, it's also like a huge developmental period for children um, in terms of finding your place with authority. Um, for a lot of kids, school is the main thing that they have going on. Um, not only for academic reasons, but also social reasons. Um, personally, I, I never had any, uh, children around my house, uh, in my neighborhood or anything. Like, all my friends were school friends. And if you start associating school with a negative connotation, like, let's say a teacher is, like, super hard on you, um and you just see school with a negative connotation for like a year or two, like that could have serious consequences in the long run. Um, not only with like, you know, with their mood, but like it may damage their their uh, view of school for years. Like so many kids are, are so against the school system because... Um, Sometimes they just get left behind and, and you know, there's no reason to forgive and forget something like that. But of course it leads to improper pre-assessments. Next, I can be a tool of torture or an instrument of inspiration. And more so I'm going to be focusing on tool of torture. Because, I mean, when you think about it, like, at first, tool of torture almost sounds like it could be hyperbole, but in reality, like, that's really how it is. Um, children have no real say in, like, their institution or how a, a teacher treats them. And not only that, but, like, how would a child really know what it's supposed to be like. Like, if a teacher's too hard on you, how do they really know to speak up against something like that? Because they have no other experience, really. They have no idea what it's supposed to be like. They have no idea... I mean, what like what would you even do in their shoes? And, uh... Say if you're... Like, your teaching methods are, are so faulty that kids are being hurt or something. Um... 
And obviously I'm focusing on the more negative sides of uh, Gennot's perspective. Uh, it can have serious consequences. I mean, it could warp their entire perspective of what school should be. Next, I can humiliate or heal. This one's more simple. Um, getting in trouble, for me at least, in elementary school, it was kind of humiliating because um, typically I knew that I was doing something wrong. Uh, there were a few times where, you know, I got in trouble over nothing. But um, typically when I got in trouble, it was for something that I did. And I, I was pretty hyperactive. It's understandable. Uh, and I was, I would get embarrassed because not only am I letting down like this teacher who I've grown a bond with and the institution that I'm within, like the, like the school, but like my mom's got to find out about this and, uh, like my friends see this. It's like, that's, it's not a good feeling, but that's natural. It, it's different if, if a teacher goes the extra mile to like if that's the intended outcome like that's just wrong to me at least like times of correction can be healing always it doesn't have to be like traumatizing or anything um finally the very last uh portion in all situations is my response that decides whether a crisis will be blah 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 a child humanized or dehumanized that um, I feel is one of the most crucial points in the entire quote um, and that's I mean that's why he left out on it so a big part of that is young students are often talked at instead of talked to and once again, a lot of times they wouldn't really know better. It's just, that, that's the common theme for me. Students typically wouldn't know better because they're so young, so inexperienced. If I, I mean, obviously as, as an adult, uh, we can both notice a transgression against us and react accordingly. But not all students are capable of that. Overall, the, the main theme of this quote has been uh, possessing an understanding perspective and, and knowing how to use your power justly. I mean, obviously, you're going to have to do some things. Uh, like, students will get in trouble. You have to stand by your rules in your classroom, but it doesn't have to be, like, horrible. There, there are healthy ways to correct a student's behavior over time um perspective is pertinent um it's maybe a little bit off track but like it's kind of cliche at this point for for adults to talk to you like like i know how you're feeling i've been there before and then more often than not they uh, don't really show it they just say it um and in my opinion that's a result of large generational gaps um or maybe things weren't so similar maybe things weren't just the same um and i don't even mean to say anything about like advancement in technology or anything because that's not even what i'm going for i mean like differences in parenting styles differences in like culture cultural movements i mean things have been so different like decades change so rapidly it's it's important to try to relate to your students as much as possible um because how can you how can you talk to someone a certain way without knowing what it is to be talked to that way i don't even mean negative i just mean like anything like saying hello to a friend joyously you know i know that'll make them feel good uh, and it goes, I mean, goes both ways. And obviously students shouldn't be your friends necessarily because 
I mean, there are several reasons, but like you don't really have to be personal with them. You don't want to uh, maybe get too attached, but that's, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I kind of rambled there and the, the video is over 10 minutes long. Uh, hope this isn't too bad. Uh, very good quote. Thanks for referring it to me. It was, it was very eye-opening.